Anytime you modify your frame, whether it's a rake or a hardtail, the most important step before welding is making sure that everything is straight, right? Well, today we're gonna to be putting together our brand new chop source frame jig with rotisserie. Just for a little bit of a visual, this is what we ordered. We got the frame jig with the rotisserie stand. You can order just the frame jig, but I wanted the rotisserie. This is everything that it comes with. Very well organized, very well packaged. However, you do need to buy your own steel, which is no big deal. Right in the directions is a list with the size tubing and the length that you're gonna need. You can call your local place and they'll cut it for you. Uh, keep in mind that if you do anything custom, like too custom, like if you want to build a drag bike, like I plan on building here soon, you're going to want to extend your main rails for the stand and the jig itself. I also extended the upright for the, next fi the neck fixture because I plan on building tall bikes as well. One of the main reasons I got this jig is because of how versatile it is. I mean, you can make this as long as you'd like, as short as you'd like, and you can move it at any point. You can replace these rails because there's virtually almost zero welding aside for the rotisserie part here and then the feet. That's it. Let's assemble our fixtures. Here we go. I'm gonna put all these together. Starting with our base clamps. That was satisfying. Next page. Uh, neck fixture. Now when you're putting these things together, it says right here in the directions, if you care about the appearance of your jig, washers have, when they're stamped, there's a sharp side. Make sure you put the dull side against the paint. Wow. Our next fixture. Coming up next, axle plate fixture. That's this guy right here. I mean, for the most part, you can just go off the way the pictures look, but I highly recommend reading the directions. All right. Axle plate fixture, done. Adjustable width fixture. All right, adjustable width fixture, done. Feet. These are nice. Rotisserie brackets. These big boys. All right. Both rotisserie plates finished. So far, so good. I mean, as long as you read the directions, it's pretty simple. They do require you torque these to 20 foot pounds and use a little bit of blue. Uh, other than that, everything else is just lock washers. So these, these extra bolts that come with the rotisserie are for if you're gonna use two by two instead of two by three tubing. I'm using two by three, so these are extra freebies. All right, I've got everything assembled. We got all of our base plates. We got our neck, we got our rotisserie. We have our adjustable width and we have our axle plate fixture. Everything's done, ready to go. Now we can move on to steel. Starting off with the frame jig, we're gonna grab our main rails, our neck fixture upright and our axle plate upright. Now, since I'm also using the rotisserie stand, I'm also gonna need an additional 18 inch piece for the end. And now I'm gonna get my base clamps into place on the main rails for my jig. Starting off with the base clamp for the upright for the neck fixture. And then moving on to the base clamp for the axle plate bracket upright. 
And finally, the base clamp for the rotisserie bracket upright. The uprights need to extend below the main rails for structural reasons. The directions recommend using a couple scrap pieces of 2x4s, which will leave you with an inch and a half of overhang. However, I'm going to use 2x2 tubing since I've extended my uprights and I'm not worried about losing a half inch of adjustability. The directions also recommend extending your main rails past the uprights 1 inch, but I'm going to match the 2 inches below since I've also extended my main rails and I'm not too worried about that either. However, I wouldn't recommend going any further than that because then you risk not clearing the uprights on your rotisserie stand. Now for this next step, we're going to be making the feet. So it looks like we're going to need to drill some holes and weld some tubing. We're going to mark our holes centered on each side. This is two by two tubing. So we're going to go one by one. I'm going to punch a hole right there. Same thing on this side. We got our holes. We're going to put our feet in. And now we're gonna remove our feet from the nuts. All right, now we need to put a hole dead center on these. This goes here. So we're gonna take that. We gotta weld that nut right on there. Easy peasy. Done with that one. One more to go. So now we need to weld this four inch piece to this two foot piece with the nuts facing away from each other. Pay close attention to the way that I do this so you don't make the same mistake that I just did. Like I said earlier, make sure you read the directions. <laughs> weld this way. Don't weld down here because there's rails that sit right there and if you weld, you risk uh, it's just not fitting right. So make sure you weld it here, not here. All right, so I got these all welded up. These are good to go. So now we're gonna move on to the rotisserie stand. All right, these holes need to be one inch down and then four inches down. I'm gonna drill a hole here and a hole here. Got my holes drilled. Now we're gonna take these and these are gonna go right in there. Nice snug fit. Finish welding up the uprights. Then we gotta throw these brackets on here. I don't need that anymore. Uh, time for legs. One foot in place. So now we're going to put our rotisserie bracket in place. So bolt goes through, bracket goes on, washer and nut goes through. Beautiful. All right, the rotisserie stand is looking good, nice and complete. I'm going to go grab my brother. We're going to pick up the jig slide her into the stand and then after i get that in the stand we're going to put the jig together so the way that i put the jig on the rotisserie isn't the way the directions say to do it they say to take the brackets and mount them on the jig and then lift the jig with the brackets and then put those two large bolts through the uprights on the rotisserie stand 
Some people have even had luck laying the rotisserie stand down and then putting it together on the ground and lifting it up. Either way, you're going to want two people because this thing is heavy. The directions recommend having the main rail about 8 inches from the center of the diamond on that plate. There is no wrong way about it. As long as you get it together and it spins, you're good to go. After you get everything assembled, all the bolts get torqued to 15 foot-pounds. Jig's in the rotisserie. Now we just gotta put the brackets on the jig, and then we're ready to rock and roll. There is one more piece that I had to put together. I did this off camera. It's exactly the same way that we put the legs together. This piece just goes here between these frame rails, and that's what the um, adjustable width brackets go on. These go on here just like that, and that's what you bolt your frame to. All right, so now we're going to put our neck bracket on. This is just going to slide right on down here. Uh, that could be one tall bike. <laughs> here. I'll tighten these on just by hand enough to keep it tight. This neck fixture has the ability to go from a 15 degree rake just like this all the way to a 60 degree rake. Wow. We're gonna have to take advantage of that someday. Axle plate goes just like that. The axle plate has three sets of holes. You got one inch, three quarter, and five eighths. I got the three quarter inch set because that's the most common size I'm gonna be using. And if I ever need to get any others for any other reason, you get the options. And there you have it. We have a completed frame jig with rotisserie. Now the last step is to put on these stickers.